What are some of the specific things that you do to create the culture at the Bears, and how would you define the team culture here? Well, culture is really the character of the team. And the best way to begin that, uh, uh, as we try to do here, is just develop authentic relationships with our players. And that takes time, really get to know them, where they're from, their background, and, and getting to relate to them as, as people, not just as players. Uh, we think that you know, leads to truth, it leads to clarity and communication, and it leads to a place uh, where we want to go, which is to become a humble and, and hardworking football team that's uh, uh, really uh, leveled in, uh, in respect and humility. And how do you foster that from player to player? Well, I, think it, I think it first starts with, with your demeanor. Um, you know, around here we say we want to inspire leadership and we don't want to develop a leadership team, but we want to develop a, a team full of leaders. And to do that, it starts with e each and every, every one of us, you know, carrying ourselves with the demeanor of a leader. Uh, and the first ways are really, you know, how you talk to people, the words you use, and um, the way you listen, and the way you treat other people. And that's grounded in respect, and uh, which is really holding others in higher regard, and in humility, which is really saying to be a part of this team, it's, it's bigger than me. And uh, the individual uh, takes a back seat to, uh, to, to the whole, to the, to the team. How can you combat hazing or other negative behaviors that are sometimes associated with locker rooms? Yeah, uh, I think, uh, you know, the, the hazing has uh, got a lot of different, different meanings. Uh, for us, it simply means uh, anything that's going on within the framework of the locker room that takes away from our focus on winning. So if a player is spending time having to worry about what he's got to do in a rookie show, or he's spending time uh, doing something that uh, would take away from his ability to focus on his preparation uh, and getting ready for the next day's practice, uh, that can really um, hurt your football team in the long run and affects winning. Uh, the other thing that it does, it disrespects the people that you're with and really puts them in a position where they're, they're, they're lesser than you and we don't want to ever do that. We, we understand here that everybody's just as important as the other guy. And we often say that, uh, you know, we are you and you are us. And uh, we, we try to make that very clear early on and, and really in different ways show them how those kind of actions, demeanor, and words uh, can really take away from what we're here to do, and that's to win football games. As a coach, how do you send that message preemptively so it's not a problem before it becomes a problem? Well, I think the best way, you know, to a preemptive strike against hazing is to explain to them what it is, what it looks like, and then why you don't want to have it around and how it hurts your football team. So, you know, we take the time to do that, to explain the, the different references to where uh, one player is uh, treated lesser than another. Uh, and we talk about some of those actions that have historically taken place throughout locker rooms in the NFL and other places. And, uh, and then try to explain clearly to them, you know, why they don't belong and they have no place uh, in our locker room. And certainly that's always going to meet with some resistance, particularly with players that have been hazed in the past and have a sense of entitlement that, you know, they need to be, they need to ha have that opportunity as well. Uh, our players seem to have worked through that very well. And uh, I think the, the clearer you can paint the picture early, the better you, chance you have to uh, resolve the issue early. What character traits uh, do you consider most important to a player's success, both in terms of individual achievement and of team leadership? Well, I think just the, the value of hard work and, and showing how hard, uh, showing how much you love the game through your hard work really it will explain a lot uh, as, as you work through it. And players uh, come into our locker room and they, we know they love football and they, we see that they love it through their actions and their work ethic and then they're willing to work hard uh, that takes care of a lot of the issues. And then it's about, on a daily basis, again, showing respect for everybody in the locker room and everybody out of the locker room that are, that's in the building and uh, with a recognition that uh, we hold everybody in the highest regard and everybody is, has a stake in us getting to where we want to go and being part of our vision. And then, as I said before, uh, the, the, the concept of humility, that value of humility and that value of respect is all you need to, to carry you through the adversity and success. Of, of what you might face not only during the course of a season but just just day to day um, uh, with your football team. Humility again being just um, 
I mean, it's not a term of, of, uh, of uh, meekness. It's a term that says, I understand that for me to, to be able to play it at my best, everyone around me has is, is got a part in that, and they have to be at their best. It kind of illustrates how close the differences are between a lot of players that come through here, because you don't get here without working hard, and you don't get here without being able to take direction. So what's the tiebreaker when you're... When well, certainly you're talent's going to be an issue when you get to this level, and, and uh, what you do with that talent is the, is the most important thing, because really there, we're talking such a, it's such a minor margin of error for those who do wind up making it and are able to stay durable, stay accountable, um, stay dependable uh, uh, each and every day and each and every year for them to have long and, and lasting and successful careers. What are the roles that youth and high school sports coaches could use to develop character in their players? Well, I think that uh, with, with any coach, and certainly those that are um, coaching at that level, is uh, each and every coach has to decide what their purpose really is in coaching. And they have to really come to terms with that. And, and uh, if they're if they're coaching for the for the proper reasons, and uh, you know, winning is a result of uh, doing the right things. Coaching, it's not the reason why we coach. And, you know, we talk to our players all the time. I mean, feeding our family is not the reason why we're here to win a championship and to pursue a championship. It's a result of the things we do on a daily basis. So, you know, I think that uh, first of all, you know, each and every young coach has got a or, or coach in youth leagues, you know, to take some stock in why am I here and why am I doing this? And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, they're doing it for the same reasons we are doing here, and that's to create men that are uh, at our level that are better fathers, husbands, and teammates because we think that can lead to winning. And that behavior leads to winning. It's really the X factor uh, when you're dealing in a league with great coaches and great players. Uh, so as that pertains to younger players, certainly, um, just the skill set, the disciplines, and uh, a sense of accountability, a uh, sense that uh, their job is really important uh, in terms of the big picture are all, all aspects and uh, in one of the most difficult yet honorable jobs that you can do, and that's, uh, that's coaching young, young people. How do you personally help players bounce back once they've made a mistake? Well, I, uh, I think that uh, number one is I try to explain to them why they made a mistake, the reasons for it. We all do that. Uh, uh, making sure that they're empowered to, to, to accept accountability for it. Uh, we, don't, we don't put players in a position to be fearful where we create any kind of depression or anxiety or stress. We try to show them that here's the things that you could have controlled in this area, your preparation, your enthusiasm, your effort, your actions, uh, and, and your fundamentals and techniques. And you know, players at any level, they want, they want to be held accountable for things that they can control. Um, and that when you know they've worked hard and they've done their best, uh, you don't want them to meet the enemy either on the sideline or after a game uh, because uh, they don't deserve that, particularly when they're hardworking, they love football, and they're doing everything they can to help their teammates. But uh, football's a zero-sum game. You know, somebody wins and somebody loses on each and every play and each and every week somebody wins and somebody loses. And, you know, one of the things we try to do is to try to uh, expound on, on, on why failure is a good thing during the course of the day because uh, on, on each and every play in practice, again, somebody wins and somebody loses, and how they respond to that uh, on the next play is the most important thing. And, and all those things go into uh, you know, those issues when, when things don't go well for a player. What do you say to a quarterback who has just thrown an interception, and does your reaction differ if a defensive back makes a great play or if it's just a poorly thrown ball? You know, how I talk to the quarterback after, after any play, um, and even an interception is all dependent on the situation. Uh, and, and some of it's just a, a sense of a feel, and others is a, a sense that I've got to ask certain questions. You know, what did you see? Um, why did you make the decision? Try to get him to answer his own questions and why it happened. And then get to the point. Maybe it, it was a, um, a ripple effect, not something he did, but somebody else did, or something I did, or the play call itself. So uh, we, you know, there's a lot of different ways, but the most important um, goal is to, to put it behind us as quickly as we can and move on to the next play. Can you compare the role of sportsmanship in the NFL with the role of sportsmanship in youth sports? Yeah, I think it's all the same. I, 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 I'm, I would find it difficult to, to see a difference in sportsmanship. And you know, We, we go into uh, every game respecting our opponent. Uh, we don't believe in demonizing an opponent and making them 
lesser than us because as soon as we demonize opponent, we are making them lesser than us and we're, showing them that we're not showing them the kind of respect they deserve. Um, in our locker room, we talk about it all the time. The, the, the players and the coaches around the league are, are guys just like us. They're hardworking, they love football, and they're experts at the game at every level, and there's talent. So uh, to um, not be respectful of your opponent and not give them uh, every honorable respect and, uh, that they deserve is something that uh, uh, we talk about all the time, is making sure that we look at our opponents on equal level, and that equates to sportsmanship and doing the right thing. Uh, the other thing we always talk about is whatever techniques and fundamentals that we're using, we would never be doing them to hurt our opponent in any way or injure them, that they all have, have careers just like we do. And we would never want to put ourselves in a position to do anything but uh, play the game within the framework of the rules, uh, play as hard and as fast and as, as, uh, as long as we can uh, for 60 minutes, uh, and then once the game's over, uh, shake their hand. and. Um, there's nothing like competition, which means striving together, even if it is your opponent, because with that you, you're, you're put in a position where you have to be at your best each and every week. Your opponent today may be your teammate tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who have been some of your favorite players to coach, and why have they been your favorite players to coach? Yeah, getting into who my favorite players were, first of all, my memory doesn't go, go back that far. And, um, you know, I've, I've always had a hard time of singling out players or coaches that I've worked with because there's been so many great ones that by mentioning one or two, you're really not giving the respect and, um, that, that, that others would deserve. Are there generic um, personality traits that attract you to players? I, I think that uh, you know, the number one trait that attracts me to players is those, of those players that are not just hardworking but selfless. Uh, they, they really do understand that uh, the, the, the quickest way to have a successful career is to, to be at your best so those around you can be at their best because this is a game where every single player on a team on a game day is interconnected and everything that they do really, uh, there's a direct result in, in what you do during the course of the game. So I think selflessness is, uh, is one where, you know, when a player wants it more for his teammate than he wants it for himself, um, those are the kind of guys you want to coach and be around each and every day. Why did you want to get involved in the uh, National Advisory Board uh, for Positive Coaching? Well, like, um, you know, I was, uh, I was led to it by people that I really respect. Um, I love this foot, I love the game. Um, I think it's important. It's, it, it teaches so many life skills on so many different levels. Um, and I want to see it continue uh, with young people uh, getting, the, getting educated uh, to, the, to the best of those people who are working with them can do. Um, as I look back on my, my youth, it's my coaches I remember more than anything, and it didn't matter what sport it was in. Um, I've always uh, connected with them, stayed connected with them, and, and really appreciate what they did in terms of my growth as a, uh, not, not an athlete as much as, <laughs> as, as much as a person, and I'm, uh, it's something that I can really relate to, and if there's a way I can be a small help, I'm happy to do it. There's uh, one bit of advice that you could give to a youth or high school coach coming up, what, what would that be? Um, well, that's a, that's a, take, the, the one thing to give a advice to is you that, give two or three, that, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a tough one. Um, uh, you know, as I said, I think that, uh, you know, finding your own purpose and why you coach and why you do what you do, I think is a great, a great way to start because your purpose is really uh, um, defined in your heart. And uh, when your heart and mind are working together for a cause, or that's empowering. Um, so. Uh, that, that's where it differentiates. I think uh, you know, coaches are differentiated, the ones who really know why they do what they do and uh, you know, put their mind together with that. There, there's something that, uh, that happens within us all when we connect uh, in those two parts of our bodies um, that brings out the best in us, so I, I would encourage that. Uh, do you ever yell at players? And if you do, in what situation do you think that's beneficial? I don't yell at players. Um, I'm passionate with them. Um, I talk loud at practice at times because I want people to hear what I have to say. Um, but I think that coaches have to coach the way they, way they have to coach. And um, yelling at players to me would be defined as being demeaning or degrading or insulting or disrespectful. Uh, that doesn't happen uh, to any extent uh, on our football field, and I hope it's not something that uh, I do, 
Uh, but if it has happened over the years that I've said some things I regret, and I think the best way to get through that is just to be vulnerable and apologize to those that it's happened to, because we're we're in a very highly competitive um, environment, highly emotional environment, and and we do at times. We've seen it all the time where coaches and players get outside themselves, and that's not who they really are as people. Uh, but for a minute, they, they, as I say, they lose their minds. So uh, when that happens, uh, I think the best thing to do is to apologize as soon as we can and move forward. Um, but hopefully that doesn't happen very often. Um, if we hold everybody in high regard and respectful of them, uh, we can find words to use that uh, will maintain that level of respectability between the two people that are involved. And there are still moments that a coach can learn. And just because you're a coach doesn't you could take that as a teaching moment for yourself. That's right. I mean, I, I think that uh, this is a profession because there's so many variables on multi-levels between relationships and, 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 and the number of people involved and the exponential ratio between the number of people involved. Uh, when you get 11 on 11, just think about how many plays you can, you can think of. It's, it's infinite. And that goes the same thing for personalities. They come into uh, contact with each other so many different ways during the course of a day that you're constantly learning, and, and football is a, a consummate teacher of that.